Well, I've been working in this, um, this uh, idea of generative video uh, for about 10 years. And it's kind of a mouthful, but we haven't been able to figure out what else to call it. <laughs> so it's like, uh, and um, about 10 years ago, I started creating these pieces that would create a portrait of place over time, where there's a camera mounted over a screen attached to a computer, and they'd capture video from the environment for a minimum of eight years. And software would determine what was captured, what was stored, and how it was replayed back on screen again. And these have existed, or they've been commissioned in different places, in public settings and, and collections and museums. And, and um, I started thinking about, okay, so let's take this process and invert it. And I've done landscapes like this as well with robotic cameras. So what if we, uh, instead of being a little bit over a long period of time, let's kind of pull a sock inside out. And let's collect a lot of video over a very short period of time. Let's focus on individuals. Let's, let's really look at portraiture now. Let's really kind of hunt directly at the subject. Mm -hmm. And how would we do it? And what would it look like? And what would the process be? And um, how could it be non-frontal? How could it be multidimensional? And how could we uh, really engage the system of chance? And, and, and what about the things that we that we don't see when someone sits for a portrait, that they don't, how they don't compose themselves. Maybe the gesture of a hand, the move of a head, the, the crossing of the feet. Like, let's look at all those things and put that together and then get a much fuller portrait of somebody over time. And that's when this idea of the cube came about. The way that these function is that um, there is, um, as I mentioned, uh, there's 24 cameras in the cube itself. And uh, so over the course of an hour, that generates several thousand video files. And the video files then are put onto a display computer and the software goes through and starts to select them. So a typical video has a beginning, middle and end, and it loops and starts over again. There's no loop point here, it's computational video. So literally what's happening as we're looking at this right now is software is looking at say 5,000 video files and through its own logic, it's picking which ones it wants, when it wants, and then it has this latitude to treat them in any way it wants to treat them within these set of parameters uh, and manipulate them as it wants to. So ostensibly what happens is that each viewing is unique every time this cycles through. What was interesting was seeing how people visualize themselves and, and whether it was performative or if it was of type or, or of non-type and just the different ways that they kind of identified and used this space and process as a creative canvas to experiment. And I was really clear with everybody too. I'm like, you know, it's an experiment. I'm trying to figure this out. You know, it's, it's like this is, you know, we're going to see what happens. Uh, the scientists were, were really wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think they all understood in the spirit of experimentation uh, that, that uh, there are a lot of variables. And they, and they fully engaged the process that way. And then uh, this is Elon Musk. Uh, so Elon was the co-founder of PayPal. Um, he is Tesla Motors, which is an electric car company, and also SpaceX, which is one of the first uh, private space exploration or heavy lifting companies. Uh, um, and uh, his was great. He said, he said, Lincoln, if you could connect a VGA cable into my brain, this is what you'd see. And we started with that as this kind of like core design component. So, all right, so tell me what it is, Elon. What do you see in your head? And he said, you know, my mind's swimming with all these issues. I'm a micromanager. I want to know everything about every rocket that's being produced, that's being launched in every aspect of the car. And this is, so he brought in these photographs, these launch charts, models of rockets, models of cars. And just, it felt almost like a teenage boy's room in there when he was done in that space. Um, very few people um, say, okay, um, Got it, I, I've got it, don't need to talk about it, I'll figure it out. Everybody wants to in, engage, in, and even the creative people who have been, uh, I've done a number of portraits of, uh, of painters and musicians. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just trying, because it's, it's, it's a different way of doing it, right? It'd be one thing if it was just, okay, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna take a photograph of you, uh, but, uh, or just sometimes do a straight video of you, but no, 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 we're gonna take it, we're gonna do all these other things to it as well, and uh, you've gotta be in there for an hour, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is MIA, so for hers, she kind of, she created this money machine in there, and um, went out and uh, purchased after she got there, four large fans, and then um, at like six o'clock on a Friday, tried to exchange a thousand dollars for a thousand dollars in ones in Manhattan, mm -hmm. uh, which is a whole separate process. And then invited people from Hearst Tower to come in, and you had sixty seconds to go in, and whatever money you could grab, you could take with you. And um, so there was this. It was obviously a very popular place to be for sixty seconds. <laughs> And, um, 
And then she was in the corner and she had this really great synthesizer, it was about the size of about this big. And so through the stereo in there, there she is, she was playing music and kind of creating this whole ambient uh, space in there. And what's neat again is like every, it's, it's like water, it finds its level. Everybody kind of like hits a level of how much, they, how much, how engaged they want to be, how much they want to do, what they want to evidence themselves, and how they ultimately want to visualize themselves. Uh, George Clooney. So uh, with, the, 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 <laughs> I was sitting at home trying to rock my daughter to sleep and my cell phone rang. Hi Lincoln, this is George Clooney. Hello George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, I have, I have one very, very simple thing. I, I asked him, what's that? He said, don't make me look like a, and I said, I won't make you look like that. Just, let's just kind of like, <laughs> we will find something that works. And, it was really kind of a beautiful series of conversations with him about trying to figure out this blend to try uh, um, figure out how he would um, portray himself. And ultimately, we decided on uh, dancing with 10 different women. Each woman uh, had one uh, Frank Sinatra song uh, in the cube. And they were all randomly chosen except for my mother, uh, <laughs> who, was the, <laughs> who danced with him in there. And, uh, since you're keeping in, and I think you've touched on this a little bit already, um, you're keeping within the video art vein, so what are the advantages of a moving image as an artistic medium or as a form of portraiture over the static image? Well, I mean, the ability to connect with somebody. I mean, if, if you think about it, so a uh, painted portrait in that oil canvas and the, the way in which the story was told through a still image and, and in terms of the way in which it was layered in and you had all this, you, you had this coded set of signifiers mm -hmm. within the pictorial plane that were meant to tell the story. I mean, I've got to imagine that if those artists would have had access to this sort of technology, they would have embraced it as well because it allows for a much broader and deeper telling of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you can connect and being able to see the moving image uh, and, I think, uh, and, and hear the voices of people, particularly we're working now with a lot of audio in the work, is, 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 it, it adds depth and gravity to the entire portrait process. Uh, and it's very much of, this of our time right now. I mean, we're, we're, I think we're, we're certainly in the nascency of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of ubiquity within uh, video as means of, of, of communication. It's not relegated simply to those who can afford the equipment, but everybody is creating it now uh, on an uh, individual level as well. So.